Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome to the From the Depths tier list. Or at the very least, uh, my idea of what um, uh, the best and worst weapons are in From the Depths. So, a little disclaimer to begin with is saying that this is based uh, on a combination of my own experience and what I have heard over the years people say in the community and like on the on forums and like on discord and just uh, in a YouTube poll I did uh, not too long ago and keep in mind that the best weapon system is the one that you have the most fun with because at the end of the day uh, the game's about having fun you know if you want to use a weapon that I might uh, that I uh, am about to dunk on that's okay like they've all got their uh, little niche and that's fine with that all being said, let's start at the bottom. So down uh, in F tier, uh, we've got, I'm sad to say, uh, cram cannon. So where is Bertha? There's Bertha. And uh, does Bertha have a local weapon controller? She does not. So cram cannons are at the bottom uh, tier of From the Depths weapons. And I say this as an enthusiastic cram gunner, as someone who really likes cram cannons. They're the first weapon type I learned in From the Depths. I've stuck with them ever since. But even I have to admit, uh, they are not the best overall. They are, in fact, the opposite. They're the worst. They're down here in F tier. Um, F for feeling good, but not very effective. So, uh, let's go over the cons first. Um, assuming I remember my math right, cram cannons have the best uh, firepower per volume and per cost of any weapon system in the game. Uh, even after a patch or two that made them more pricey, uh, they've still got more affordable um, DPS per per material spent, both in terms of, like, you know, just ammunition costs, in terms of blocks, and also in terms of volume. They're, they can be very compact. They're very compact, cheap firepower, so to speak. But that's about it, really. So, there's, got, there's a long list of reasons why they um, uh, otherwise kind of suck. And one of them is really slow shell speed, so 200 meters per second is the fastest a cram shell can go. And that really hinders their ability to, well, just it re basically a slow fire rate and slow muzzle velocity uh, means that uh, cram cannons are not useful against a wide variety of targets. So they're pretty much only good against uh, surface vessels, which are... Uh, big, slow, that do not move erratically and do not have a significant amount of anti-munition defense. So, I can demonstrate that uh, quite handily. Is this a prefab? It is! You cheeky sod. Let's uh, have this with one of my biggest favorite, uh, favorite ist uh, crams. This is the Doom Waffle. With nice white coloring. So this is a uh, well, it's not as strong as cramps get, but it is very, very strong. Uh, frag doom cram, and so against things which are big and slow, it does absolutely great. So where is our friend? Yeah, the bulwark. Bulwark is nice and bulwark is nice and big and slow. So the block has crams of its own, you can tell. And so against things that are nice enough to be big and fat and stay reasonably still, uh, cram cannons can make uh, quite a mess of them. So that's this is unfortunately the only thing they are good at against, uh, say, anything else. So let's have a fast thing. Let's have let's have the terawatt. The terawatt is a big thing, but it's a fast thing. How's our reload go? So the terawatt is a fast-moving thing, even though it's quite big. Uh, it did just shoot itself, though, so that uh, helps us. No end, uh, no small end. And we missed by a country mile, because that thing is going at uh, about 100 meters per second. And crams are not very good against anything moving over 40 meters per second, which, frankly, is most things in the game. And they are also completely useless against things that are under the water. So where is... My friend, the submarine... Where is the submarine? Submarine? Submarine. Oh, here we go. Here's a submarine. Let's 
So this guy is uh, hanging out. Um, reason? Nope. Never mind. Where they go? So we did clip it right there, but uh, generally speaking, anything below the water surface, cramps can't really do jack deadly against. So that's why their bottom tier, unfortunately, is because they're just not versatile. They're they're kind of the most specialized weapon type in the game, and unfortunately, that is not very good. So. Yeah, even without the time fuse, that cram shell would never have gotten near uh, that submarine at all. So, crams down here in F tier, sorry to say. So the next uh, thing up, up in D tier, so to speak, is simple weapons. So that's basically all of these uh, lumped into one category. So that includes uh, all these uh, little simple uh, guns and cannons, tactical nukes, uh, the shard cannon and rams. Uh, simply because um, simple weapons are great, um, mostly because they're very, well, as the name implies, they are simple. Uh, they um, they do not require much thought, you basically stick, uh, stick them on a turret, uh, have local weapon controllers controlling them, and that's basically Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, and really, like, that's basically it, really. It's just they are nice and simple. Even... Um, even people who are reasonably new to From the Depths can, like, even the custom shell weapons, you can very quickly figure out how to use them, what goes well with them, and it's just, it's nice, simple, straightforward. And they're very compact, so, particularly these uh, simple AA guns right here, and these uh, custom shell weapons over here, and the tactical nuke for that matter, um, they jam a lot into a very small package, so, uh, these fellas are only. Uh, two blocks high and then three by three, uh, which means that they're far more power dense than an equivalent uh, sized uh, cram cannon or advanced cannon would be. Or maybe not the cram cannon. But yeah, so it's just jamming a lot into a small space, small, compact, simple. The cons being uh, that they are actually quite expensive for the kind of damage they deal. So if I just undo all my good work here, and if I find that prefab. Uh, right here, control mechanisms. Ooh, da, da, da. Let's do this. And let's have a few of these. Just little weapon controllers here, there, and everywhere. And we're going to stick a few of these fellas down. So, these fellas. Uh, simple weapons are good against things, well, generally that. Um, well, they're all kind of specialized, so the AI guns, whoopsie daisy, the AI guns are exactly that. They're good against uh, lightly armored things, small lightly armored things. Uh, that goes for basically all of these. Getting up to here, you can get some more medium sized things, except these guys don't have very good fire rate. Uh, tactical nukes, you need to, well, hit the thing. Uh, good for making kamikaze craft, but um, that's the only thing it's good for. And rams are, well, they're good for ramming craft. And the um, thing is, these are heavy. And, well, all of these are kind of expensive, what they do. So a ram is only about 30 materials. But um, the kind of vehicle that uh, uses uh, a ram to maximum potential, uh, they tend to be on the pricey side because they require uh, a lot of speed and also a lot of durability. So that's kind of where their cost kind of comes up. And yeah, so, yeah, like, they're all kind of, uh, every simple weapon is kind of pricey for their performance. Like, look at the nuke, 2,500 uh, bucks for something that is des meant to kill itself on contact. And yeah, so, these are simple weapon guns, they're like 1,500 each, and these are the, these aren't even the most expensive ones. And so, for that price, uh, against things like, where are you, so, against things like dusters, for instance... Let's just modify this fella. So he goes at the right range. So against uh, little things like dusters, which literally have no armor whatsoever, they do absolutely fine. They do a spanking good job, in fact. Uh, you can just clip the wings out of the out of the air, just with very little forethought. For with very little forethought, just slap down uh, these little air guns wherever you like. And you can trim the wings of planes. Uh, the problem comes uh, when you've got something a little bit more substantial flying at you. So, where is it? So, 
something like the Maelstrom, which is also a plane, uh, but actually has decent armor. It's made out of metal, and I believe... I believe that it does have... Yes, it does. It has heavy armor on it. So, for the same cost of all these, uh, these little AA guns, you could uh, have a different weapon system that could actually damage the Maelstrom. You could have missiles, you could have a laser, you could have stuff like that. Damage numbers are winding up a little bit, but it looks like... Yeah, we just trimmed its tail feathers a little bit. Actually, knocking this thing out of the air is going to take a little bit more than that. So, yeah, that's the downside of simple weapons. That's why they're down here in D. And a little disclaimer, like, you will kind of, kind of find niches for all weapon types. But the higher up we go, uh, the more versatile we're going to get, basically. So, let's do this. Alright, so, up in C tier. C, C. Seashells, seashells on the seashore. Uh, what is this fellow? We've got a particle cannon. An old one. A uh, not very good one. What is that color scheme? And I just remembered we need uh, some kind of batteries for this. So yeah, so particle cannons are up here in C, exactly in the middle, so to speak. Um, the middle of the tier list is where things can kind of get a bit, bit debatey. It's pretty clear um, what's at the bottom and what's at the top, but in the middle, eh, there's a lot more room for debate. So where is our friend? Where is it? Let's have electric pigs. One, two, and three. So, particle cannons. What can we talk about with particle cannons? Well, for one thing, uh, they're hit scans. So, when you fire them, there's no projectile travel time at all. It's instantly hit. And they are one of the few things uh, in the game that are not penalized when firing through water at all. So, let's go find uh, the submarine again. And wait for this fella to recharge. You'll notice we managed to hit this thing even though it's down under the water. So yeah, so particle cannons tend to see a fair amount of late game use uh, because I should also mention they have no hard counters. There's no form of active defense that actually uh, counters them uh, whatsoever, which is super handy dandy. I need a passive sonar on here, don't I? Yes, I do. Come on, hit that submarine one more time. One more time for daddy. How did you miss? How did you miss? That's very silly of you. I don't like it. But yeah, there is, uh, there's problems with part of plans and well, uh, which is why they're up there down here in, uh, in C tier, in the middle of the line, so to speak. Uh, one of which is that literally everything about them is expensive, and I'm going to be saying that a lot as you, uh, as we move up the tier list. So, the smallest particle cannon uh, component, just the one meter tube, is 200 materials. So, already, that's, um, that's like, really damn expensive. So, compare that, one particle cannon tube is the same, is more expensive than a 50, ca than a 50 caliber uh, AA gun. So, yeah, they, uh, they cost a lot. And they're expensive to run. So... Uh, they cost a lot of uh, money to set up, to build, and they also burn through energy like nobody's business. So, these fellas, I believe, yeah, so no overclocking whatsoever. Uh, the length of tube is, isn't that long, 20, 35 meters. The energy needed per shot is 24,000 and 42,000, and this isn't even twice as long. So, yeah, it's a... Uh, they are expensive. They're expensive no matter what you do, so they're not ideal for starter craft and stuff like that, simply because, well, you probably won't have the money for them, unless you're very good at making them, which I am not. And, um, so yeah, they're also volatile, so if I am dumb enough to, uh, let's go over here, let's turn you off. Actually, let's destroy all enemy vehicles, do that, and if I am a dingleberry and I decide to do this and I fire the particle cannon uh, as you can see um, when they're damaged 
uh, they damage things even more. So they're volatile. Uh, first thing on the list that is actually volatile, uh, you really don't want your particle cannons to ever get damaged, because when they do, they will probably take uh, a lot of your ship with them. So that's why they're down here. Okay, next. Next, we will talk about the other energy weapon, lasers. So now we're getting up into the stuff that you are probably going to see a lot more of. Wait, maybe... Wait, no, did I do this right? Hang on. C, D, A, B, C, D. I just remembered F. Okay, so simple weapons are at E tier. My bad, I forgot the alphabet. Packs are in D. The letters aren't really uh, important. What is important is like uh, the stacking of them. So, over in C tier, and this is the part where you start to see uh, stuff that uh, is useful and stays useful throughout the whole game or throughout any level of a tournament, for instance. Lasers! So, let's see if we can find a laser system. Did I ever save a laser system as a prefab? No, I didn't. Thankfully, uh, the devs have beat me to it. Basic laser setup, right here, right here. And we just need an engine or three. There we go. Where's my favorite thing? The cube Terry, there we go. Go, lovely jubbly, lovely jubbly. And we're going to have here and 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 we're going to have a laser turret. We're gonna have a different laser turret. We're gonna have this one. Because this one is my favorite because it has mimic cram battles on it. So yeah, lasers are one of those weapons that, um, they stay useful, like, say, if you're playing the NATO campaign, for instance, they stay useful uh, throughout the whole game, because like uh, particle cannons, they are hitscan, and um, uh, they are by far the best long-range option you have, and they do huge amounts of damage, and they um, are very good against armor, provided you set them up correctly. So, uh, yeah, this uh, basic laser system isn't that amazing. But it's okay, and the uh, best anti-air in the game, I should mention as well. So if we have our friend, where is it? So if you have something really annoying, like a flying squirrel, for instance. Oh yeah, I should probably mess with the detection to make sure this actually works. Wow, didn't even see it. Zap, 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 zap. So against the kind of things that are very good at dodging shells, even fast ones, uh, lasers are very, very nice. And they are better at particle cannons for uh, anti-air duty, simply because it's easier to get a laser system to aim straight up in the air, which means they can even shoot down spacecraft, which is very, very good. The reason they're not the absolute top-tier best weapon in the game, though, is because of a lack of versatility. They are only good against things... Uh, in a similar way to cram cannons, they're only good against things that are above water. So, if we have, um, let's uh, bring back our friend uh, the Marianas right here. I believe the local weapon controller here is set up so that um, it doesn't shoot at things below the water. Nope. So we're doing absolutely nothing uh, right now. So you hold your fire there, wait for the damage numbers to go away. Wait for it, wait for it, wait. Okay, so now we fire. You'll see we're doing absolutely nothing. And that is because lasers, uh, you see right here, water damage at 100 meters is about 71.25. Water damage at 500 meters is 18.36. So lasers are hugely weakened by water. They are absolutely useless against anything that's even slightly under the water. So, that's not very good. They're also reasonably easily countered uh, via smoke, so if we, that's, I believe our friend the Maelstrom has smoke, so where is it, there we go. If it doesn't have smoke, I'm going to be very embarrassed. Oh, hello, the Maelstrom does not have smoke. Also, this isn't a very strong laser. So yeah, it's just, um, let's see, what does smoke do? Let's have a look at the smoke. Let's 
smoke here. Oh, wait a minute. Was that smoke? That might have been smoke. So you see, uh, the smoke reduces laser AP to about 22%. Uh, so if we go over here, look at the AP of this laser, 44.8, 22% of that is a very low number that will barely even damage uh, very light materials. How are we doing there? Not very good. Go away, Maelstrom, you're distracting. So yeah, there are also um, shield projectors are actually pretty good uh, against lasers. So this is a strength one shield. And uh, let's uh, just actually do that. So smoke strength equivalent is that. Laser AP is reduced to... This is, keep in mind, this is strength one shield. This is as weak as they get. It is reduced to 64%. And if you uh, jack up the power of this a little bit, just to two, um, laser AP is reduced to about half. So shields and smoke are not hard counters to lasers. It is possible to just stick way too many frequency doublers on your laser system and get it to just basically ignore smoke and shields. But these are very, very expensive and it means the laser... Uh, the laser line, so to speak, the cavity, uh, tends to get very long, so... Uh, that is, uh... It's not very efficient to do that, so... Uh, lasers, great against everything above water that is uh, not smoking and doesn't have shields, and otherwise, um, not great against things hiding under the water, or that are smoking, or that have a shield up, so... That's why they're down here, they're in C tier. And then next... Um, I'm just going to delete this fortress and uh, load up a new one because I'm efficient like that. Not that one. Not that one either. This one. So now we get to B tier. So this is the one where um, I'm kind, I was kind of convinced, um, having thought about it after seeing what people were saying on the poll that I put out. Uh, we're looking at missiles. And so missiles are B tier, so second best weapon category in the game. And yes, you can probably already figure out what the... Uh, what the absolute top one is, because literally everyone said it. Well, not literally everyone, but most people said it. Uh, but missiles, uh, they are in the number two spot, uh, because uh, they are simple, versatile, and powerful. So, if we just go here, and I my friend up first, I can fire, and then we're just going to have a... Uh, what are we going to have? We're going to have... A, oh, we're going to have a... We're gonna have a whole bunch of these. Let's have medium missiles because that's fun. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Me, deep, deep, deep. And just gonna. We're gonna switch that to a radar seeker. APN. Well, no, we'll put the APN there. Signal processor. Fuel tank. Uh, and let's have frag. Warhead. Because why not? And ta-da! We have a perfectly functional weapon system that will work against most things. So if we spawn in something big and mean, let's spawn in... Maelstrom. How good is the Maelstrom's anti-air? Anti-missile, I mean. Not good enough! So, that took, what, 30 seconds for me to make, and I've already got something that is, um, capable of doing real damage, though admittedly not towards the Maelstrom. Ah, I should not have spawned in the Maelstrom as the example. Forgot it had a lambs on it. Yeah, not the Maelstrom. We need a different one. You know what? When in doubt, bigger missiles. So missiles, they just do a large amount of damage, and they're very simple to make. Uh, let's have a large launcher. Let's have a large launcher so people can see how large these are. So it's one of those things is that if smaller missiles aren't doing the trick, you just make them bigger. What is this? APN, single processor, ta-da! Now deal with this, Maelstrom. Again, that took around 10 seconds, and let's see what happens. Let us see what happens. Oh, you know what's a really good idea, though? Fins. Never mind, it took me slightly longer than 20 seconds. Okay, so, there are problems with missiles, though. 
Um, there are many, many ways to counter them. There's, depending on what kind of missile is being fired at you, there's decoys, uh, there's flares, there's, there's laser anti-munition defense, there's sea whiz, there's missile interceptors. There is hiding under the water if it is a, a thruster-based uh, missile, and there's flying out of the water if it's a torpedo. And if it's a combination of a missile and torpedo, then it's probably not very fast and you can outrun it. And so, yeah, there are many ways to counter missiles, despite the fact that they are simple and versatile. And by gum, I really want to blow this uh, maelstrom up in the face, just to prove a point. That's more like it. So, yeah. What else is there to talk about missiles? Like, yeah, it's like, they are also expensive, so... Similar story, let's just go to small missiles and you- well, yeah, like, similar to the particle cannon, a single small gantry is 200 smackers, so... Yeah, you could get a lot of simple weapons for the cost of one missile system, or even a small laser, or just something. But, you wouldn't get a missile, and that's punishment enough. These are actually surprisingly good little large missiles I've made here. What kind of damage are we doing here? Not tremendous amounts of damage, but enough to be satisfying. So, having done all that, uh, what is the best weapon system in the game? Says me. Uh, says me, well, it took me a very long time to get the hang of them, but the warning is in the name, uh, advanced cannons. They're the best, they are like, um, Pretty objectively, they are the best thing in the game ever since uh, they were first introduced. Uh, let's see, do I have any of them saved here? Yes, turrets. Well, this guy will stand in. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what exactly uh, shell type this thing has. This thing has two meter shells. And this is what? 180 millimeters. Let us just reverse engineer the shell here. So, one, two, and we're just gonna, one, two, three, four, we're just gonna be, uh, what are we gonna do? We're just gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna be, we're gonna be, we're gonna be risky for a bisky. So, 180, what's the shell length? Okay, we can go a little bit more than that. How's it doing now? A little bit too much. We'll dial that back down. There we go. And let's just refill all this. Ta-da! And we have a thing. Not a particularly good thing. This is, again, an older one. It makes a satisfying noise, though. So, APS, best weapon system in the game. Reason being, they're versatile. They can do... Anything and build them right, they do large amounts of damage. And I'm just going to uh, chuck them at the Marauder because the Marauder makes me happy when it dies. And these aren't even particularly good shells, they're kind of uh, semi penetrators. What is the stats on this? It's not amazing, is it? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, it's alright, let's switch that to frag. Go. Come on now. Yeah, it's a little bit of block confetti. But yeah, so combination of numerous handy components, in particular, if you go here, uh, super cavitation bases, uh, which removes 90% of the slowdown killed by water, uh, means that advanced cannons can shoot uh, under the water quite nicely. So they are, in fact, pretty good counter against submarines, especially when you're shooting against submarines that um, uh, have very good torpedo defense. And uh, high uh, velocity shells means that they're good against fast targets and distant targets. And once you start messing around with rail guns, uh, they get, well, even better at everything they do. Uh, kinetic rail guns, um, like, uh, so whether they be hollow point, or kinetic penetrators, like with a chemical payload attached or not, they can, you can use them 
right throughout the entire game. Right through the Nita campaign, or a custom campaign, or in tournaments, you will pretty much always see if advanced cannons are allowed, you will pretty much always see them. And the only real downsides to them is that they are expensive, volatile, and complicated. They are called advanced cannons for a reason, ladies and gentlemen. They are advanced. It took me literally hundreds of hours to figure out how to build them, and that was with um, a lot of help from people as well. I, I don't remember at what point I finally managed to cotton together uh, how to build them, but it did happen to kind of apropos of nothing so so yeah that is the only real downside to them and even then um it is possible to build whoopsie daisy it is possible to build cheaper versions of aps guns so if you're f efficient about making them uh, you can make them quite affordable and they're just very good bang for buck so even if they cost more than say an assembly size cram cannon they'll be able to hit the target more reliably anyway, so the cost is usually worth it. Uh, being volatile, you can use a cunning things. I tend to armor up the turret so that if the turret explodes... Uh, let's just disable that and I'll show you what I mean. So let's just turn this off. So if I... Yep, so these things... Um, having an armored shell in here means that the thing doesn't uh, take out its neighbors very easily. That's one way to do it. The other way is to use ejectors. So, where are you? Here you are. So, using ejectors is something I keep forgetting to do. But that's a great way to stop your advanced cannons from being too volatile. And as for complicated, well, that just that's something that's fixed with time. So, overall, advanced cannons, uh, best weapon system in the game. Like, uh, whether you... well... I don't know. I say this like... I should mention as well that despite um, the fact that I've kind of dunked on every weapon system in the game a little bit, uh, especially crams, my favorite is still cram cannons, because... Partially because they're the worst weapon in the game, it's just so much more satisfying when you do manage to get good results with them. Whereas with advanced cannons, is like, well, I just made a shell that goes uh, faster than the speed of sound. And, uh, yeah, it's just, um, it just makes, um, you know, and, well, I was about to say it makes the game easy mode. It doesn't. It doesn't at all. But, yeah, there you go. There's the tier list. Down in F tier, just the recap. Down in F tier, we've got cram cannons, because they're not very versatile at all. Least versatile weapon system in the game. Uh, E tier, we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Wait, no, A, B, C, D, E, F. Yeah, I remember the alphabet. Uh, e tier, simple weapons, because they're, um, they're they're compact and simple, but they're pricey for their performance, and uh, each one tends to be rather specialized and require, and depending on uh, things like, well, things like nukes and rams, they kind of require uh, extra effort. Uh, then in D tier, you have particle cannons, because despite the fact that they're hit scan and are one of the better submarine anti-submarine weapons you can have, they're volatile, they're expensive to build and run, uh, they're also kind of complicated to build, and I also forgot to mention they generally suck at long range. They're not as good at long range as lasers, which are up in C tier, because they're hit scan, they're the best long range weapon. They just suck against anything that's under the water, and they are they do have reasonably strong counters. I should turn Godmo back on, shouldn't I? Wow, that's why you armor your turrets, ladies. We've got an invisible barrel right here. It's an invisible barrel. It's using telekinesis. What was I doing? Ah, uh, yeah, so then uh, up in B tier we've got missiles, because even though uh, they've got uh, many ways to counter them and they're expensive, they're just very simple, they're very versatile, and they're very, very powerful. And then, well, you're looking at it right now, A tier, we've got uh, the advanced cannons, because they're the most versatile weapon system in the game. You can get them to do absolutely anything, and all of their drawbacks uh, can be countered with good design. So there you go. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon. Yeah. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps. And there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters. And I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell.